If you have been confused and stuck in between the dialogues, scenes fluctuating from the past to present to future and back, sometimes grey color, sometimes RGB color, sometimes unknown NPC in the movie, I will explain everything in the clearest way possible. So, look at the most significant key players of the Oppenheimer story at first. These are the well-wishers of Oppenheimer, enemies of Oppenheimer, and these are the people who remained neutral to Oppenheimer throughout the entire movie. The story begins with Oppenheimer living in Cambridge for studying new physics under Patrick Blackett, whom he used to hate enough to one day poison his apple, but the apple ended up being in the dustbin. After meeting Dr. Niles Bohr from Cambridge and Dr. Heisenberg from Germany, he got more interested in the quantum physics. He then went back to the USA joining as a professor at Berkeley and Caltech. One day, he happens to meet with Gene Tatlock at a night party in the house of Dr. Richard Tolman. Oppenheimer and Jean then start getting closer to each other day by day only until he gets to meet Kitty, his later-to-be wife. Realizing the short-livedness of this relationship with Jean Tatlock, Oppenheimer decides to break up with Jean Tatlock and marry Kitty instead. They both get married, but Kitty was not happy with the child. Dr. Oppenheimer then decides to give his child to the wife of Dr. Chevalier for babysitting for a while before moving back to Los Alamos. He then gets a visitor named Leslie Groves, who was a military colonel that time. He offers Dr. Oppenheimer to run the Manhattan Project. They both start building a remote city in Los Alamos and start recruiting as many physicists as possible, bringing along their family members as well. In Los Alamos, he gets to meet Dr. Taylor who at first claimed that the chain reaction from a nuclear device can be unpredictable. So Oppenheimer goes to Albert Einstein to find out the truth about Taylor's calculation. Although Albert refused to help Oppenheimer, Hans Bad, by the way, managed to find out the conclusion of the research. The chances of an unpredictable nuclear energy reaction turned out to be near zero. Oppenheimer then continues his research in developing two viable uranium and plutonium bombs and one day he goes to meet Dr. Fermi who showed Oppenheimer the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction center which scientifically proved that an uncontrolled nuclear energy reaction possibility is actually near zero. Oppenheimer then goes to San Francisco to meet Dr. Jean Tatlock to cure her loneliness cheating on his wife Kitty. This was the first time when Oppenheimer was interrogated by Colonel Pash on the security breach in Los Alamos. This scene was the beginning of Oppenheimer being considered as a suspected Russian agent. He was asked for the suspected person who might be involved in transferring the nuclear development information from Los Alamos to Russia, but he gave the name Eltonton, the former member of the FAECT, instead of the name of his friend Dr. Chevalier. In an early Christmas party, Dr. Oppenheimer gets to meet Dr. Niles Bohr again, who gave him information that the Nazi physicists are walking on the wrong path, making the Americans way ahead in the development of the nuclear device. Suddenly, a colleague of Oppenheimer comes to tell him that Dr. Gene Tatlock has committed suicide. This was the first time when Kitty learned about the extramarital affair of Oppenheimer. Hitler is now dead but the research is ongoing because the American government now demands the bomb for using in Japan. After a couple of test fires, Oppenheimer accompanied by General Groves goes to meet the presidential administrative members of the USA along with his team members to give them a date of their final test fire. They finally finished the development of a detonation-ready plutonium bomb named Trinity. Even after the adversities of the weather conditions, they managed to have a successful test fire before the dawn. After the successful bombing on Japan, Japan, Oppenheimer was imagining the atrocious effects the intense heat, shockwave and gamma radiation would do to the people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He then tells President Truman that he is not interested in developing more nuclear weapons as well as not interested in the development of the hydrogen bomb either. He further suggested giving back Los Alamos to the native Indians which never happened in reality. Oppenheimer then decides to leverage his influence for alarming people on the devastating effects of a nuclear or hydrogen bomb and encourages everybody to stand against the development and use are the weapons of mass destruction. When Oppenheimer was doing all of this, there was a scorpion in the dark making a strong indictment against Oppenheimer for his persecution. And the scorpion is Admiral Strauss Lewis. He along with Lieutenant Colonel Borden and Colonel Nichols conspired a predetermined AEC hearing for the security denial of Oppenheimer. And this enmity began in 1947 when Oppenheimer met Strauss at Princeton as the newly proposed director of the Institute of Advanced Study. Starting from the misinterpretation between Admiral Strauss and Albert Einstein, the public humiliation of Admiral Strauss by Oppenheimer in 1949 and the refusal in the development assistance of the hydrogen bomb altogether made this power broker go vindictive towards Oppenheimer. He then collected all the files and evidences of Oppenheimer's connection with the Communist Party members to convict him as a suspicious Russian agent with the help of Nichols and Borden. Another key player in the story is Roger Robb who interrogated Oppenheimer into confessing that he had active connection with the Communist Party members and therefore the AEC board has the right to deny the security 
security clearance of Oppenheimer based on the evidences and witness testimonies. When the final prosecuting board of the senators scrutinized the entire matter, they decided to go for a voting on whether Oppenheimer should be persecuted or not. That's when Strauss Lewis lost in the voting by three unexpected holdouts, where one of them was the later to be president, John F. Kennedy. In the end of the movie, the actual conversation between Oppenheimer and Albert Einstein was uncovered, and the conversation makes it crystal that Oppenheimer did not sour Albert Einstein on Strauss Lewis but rather talked about the chain reaction of an upcoming arms race all over the world which pissed off Albert Einstein at an instant. But Strauss Lewis had a misinterpretation that Oppenheimer said something bad about him to Albert Einstein. The movie ended with the imagination of Oppenheimer on what the modern-day nuclear warheads would look like.